This lesson is an introduction to parametric equations. Um, here are the topics. Uh, I hope to convince you that parametric equations are just kind of a better, more useful way of doing math. The way that we're comfortable defining curves in math is by either using explicitly defined functions. Um, for example, you're probably pretty familiar with the equation of a parabola, y equals x squared. Maybe I can move this parabola around. Maybe if I put a plus 2 out here at the end, uh, then this will produce a parabola that has been shifted up two units. So we get a nice picture like this. This is pretty comfortable to us. Um, and also, we're pretty familiar with uh, defining curves by uh, using implicit equations. For example, uh, most students at the Calculus 3 level have seen the equation of a circle before. Um, so here is an implicitly defined curve. So you're pretty familiar with this. This is going to be a circle. Hopefully you can see that this is a circle of radius 3. Let me try again. Okay, um, so we're going to change the paradigm a little bit and have a kind of new way of defining equations. So our new model here is uh, we're going to introduce a new variable, a new independent variable, and we're going to call it usually t for time. Um, so just to give you an example of the type of things that we're looking at. Um, so now instead of uh, y being a function of x, what we're going to have is x is going to be a function of t, let's say t minus 3, and then y will also be a function of t, so let's say t squared plus 1. Okay. So it's natural to ask, why, why are we doing this? Why are we making this change? Um, so I want to go over really kind of the, the mathematical reasons why uh, using parametric equations uh, is going to be more useful for us. I like parametric equations because it doesn't really matter what the dimension is. If you're doing math in 2D or 3D, uh, parametric equations, that's just kind of all the same. Um, I'm gonna do an example here where I write the equation of a line segment and I'm gonna do it in three dimensions. And we haven't studied anything about 3D space before. I haven't introduced the 3D coordinate system. Um, but I think you'll see if we use parametric equations, then it's really just no big deal at all. Um, so I want to introduce this idea. We're always just going to choose. We're going to choose a t in between 0 and 1. And then our method for doing this, just kind of loosely speaking, is I'm going to do final minus initial uh, times t plus uh, the initial point. Um, so in Calculus 3, there's a lot of writing equations of lines. Um, so I want you to get used to this formula, final minus initial times t plus initial. We use it a lot. Now would be a good time to pause the video and catch up on the notes if you're taking notes. Um, so we're going to write the equation of the line that connects these points. Uh, so here is the initial point, and here is the final point. And then I'm just going to use this kind of method, final minus initial times t plus initial. And that's going to give me something that looks like this, parametric equations for a line. So uh, the final point in the x-coordinate is 7, and the initial point is 2. So for x of t, I got final minus initial, so 7 minus 2 is 5, plus the initial x, the initial x is 2. Okay, see how that works? So I'll just repeat this process for the other ones. So y of t here, I need to do negative 1 minus 3, all right, I'm getting negative 4t, plus the initial point was 3, and then z of t, the last coordinate here, um, is going to be 4 minus 0, that's 4t, plus the initial point is 0 here, so I'll just leave it 4t. Um, so there, we did it. I wrote some parametric equations using this method. Um, did it work? Did it work? Um, uh, let's check. Okay, so we, we chose t is in between 0 and 1. So let's plug in the initial time here, t equals 0, and the final time, t equals 1, and see if we did start at this point and end at that point. 
Uh, okay, so if I plug in t equals zero, then x of, this was t and t is zero, so x of zero will be five times zero plus two, so five times zero is zero, plus two is two, and you can see I did get the x coordinate that I'm looking for. So in fact, if I just plug in zero for all these t's, then y of zero will be three, and z of zero, four times zero, will be zero. So it worked. At time zero, I did get the point two, three, zero. Uh, what about at time t equals one? <clears throat> so if I plug one into this, then x of one will be five times one plus two. So five times one is five plus two is seven. So I feel like it's working. Let's keep checking. Y of one now is going to be negative four T plus three. Uh, so negative four times one is negative four plus three will give me negative one. Oh, nice. And then Z of one here is gonna be four times one, that's four. So here I did get at time T equals one, I did get seven, negative one, four. Okay, so it's, it's really transparent uh, after you see this method in action, how it works. If I just dive into this formula right here, you can see if you plug in t equals zero, then all of that part will go away and you'll just be left with the initial. And then likewise, if I plug in t equals one right there for t, then this whole thing is just gonna become times one there. So I'm just gonna have final minus initial plus initial. So those two initials will cancel out and I will only have the final point left. Um, so, you know, it really doesn't matter. You could give me a two coordinate pairs that were 37 digits long and it wouldn't be a big deal. I mean, I can't imagine 37 dimensional space, but I can write the equation of a line for it. Um, so, you know, that's kind of what's good about parametric equations. It, it doesn't matter how many coordinates there are, it's still really easy to write the equation of a line. I can tell you that in three dimensions, it is very cumbersome if you want to use this method to try to do something simple, like write the equation of a line. The only way that I can use um, implicit or explicitly defined functions to write the equation of a line in 3D is to view that line as the intersection of planes. And that is really just not a nice, happy thing to do. Because we introduced the variable time, this allows us to encode uh, the speed, the velocity at which a particle is moving. So. I have two different parametric equations here. In the first one, uh, x is cosine and y is sine and t is gonna go between zero and two pi. And in the second equation, x is gonna be the cosine of two t and y is gonna be the sine of two t. Um, so I'm gonna use the graphing calculator called Desmos here, and I wanna show you how you put parametric equations into Desmos, uh, and let's get Desmos to graph these two parametric equations for us. Um, so the first one was cos t, cos t, comma, sine t. Uh, and then I want t to go between zero and two pi. Will it do that? Okay, there we go. Um, so the way that you put a parametric equation into Desmos is you can see I've just typed it here as coordinates um, and you put a comma in the middle and it always interprets t as being a parametric equation. Okay, so I've got the parametric equation in here. So um, it's graphing a circle. And then I've, uh, I've inputted these two parametric equations, but now I've chosen the letter A, and Desmos interprets constants like A and B and C as sliders. So it gave me a choice to make this slider. So I have these two different parametric equations, cos A, sine A, and then cos 2a sine 2a. And in the setup here, the first uh, parametric equation without the two on the inside, the t is gonna go between zero and two pi. And in the second parametric equations with the two on the inside, the t is gonna go between zero and pi. So 
Hopefully you have an idea already about the, the difference that's going to happen as I move that slider that represents time. Um, if you don't have an idea about what's going to happen, I encourage you to just pause the video and think about it for a second and try to predict what's going to happen um, when I move this slider um, and we watch these particles move around the path. So just think about it for a minute. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna move this slider uh, around the path. The purple dot is just the ones without the twos on the inside, and the red dot is the ones with the twos on the inside. So let's see what happens as I move them. So you can see the red one is going around faster than the purple one. In fact, as I get around here to about pi, uh, the, the red dot has made one full revolution, and the purple dot has only made half a revolution. Um, and then as I go all the way around again to 2 pi, the red one has made two full revolutions and the purple one has only made a single revolution. So um, by changing these numbers that go here on the inside of the functions, inside the argument of the functions, um, that allows me to encode uh, faster or slower moving particles. Suppose you're in some kind of engineering situation where you're trying to design something and, and you're the creator of this object um, and you have a choice between using perhaps implicitly defined functions or parametric equations. So let's look at the way those two solutions play out. So here I've, I have a graph of an ellipse um, and I, it's, so it's kind of a circle and it's been stretched out. Um, it goes up and down two and it goes left and right out to four. Um, so it's actually really easy for me to do this using parametric equations. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the parametric equations for a circle that I already know, uh, and t is going to be between 0 and 2 pi because I want this particle to make a full revolution. Then since I want the x's to go out to four, I can just put a four right there. And since I want the y's to kind of oscillate up and down between negative two and two, I can just put a two right there. Um, so this is really a transparent way uh, to, to sort of construct an ellipse that um, is the size that you wanted it to do. Now, I know, I know that you all know algebra and you could do this uh, in the same way if you start with the equation of a circle. Then what I can do is I can do x squared divided by 16 and that will stretch it out uh, four units and then I can do y squared divided by four and that will stretch the y's out by two. Um, so let's look at the two choices that we have when it comes to engineering something and we have to make a decision about how we're going to define our variables. Using parametric equations, it's really transparent what's going on. I just say, I have some x coordinates and I have some y coordinates. This is what I want the x coordinates to look like and this is what I want the y coordinates to look like. So I'm really just writing down what the coordinates are. If you want to use implicit equ equations to define this ellipse or, you know, what if you have some other shape, what you're going to need to do is go out there and look for some abstract math equation that your curve satisfies. <laughs> So if you think about those two choices, just saying, here's what the X's look like, here's what the Y's look like, compare that to searching the entirety of mathematics to hopefully come up with something that works to satisfy your equations. Um, just, you know, from a kind of big picture, we're gonna use this math to build things. Hopefully you can see that the, the parametric equation way really is more simple and preferable. One quick final point about uh, parametric equations is the theory of parametric equations is like an umbrella. It, anything that you can do with explicitly defined functions, you can also do with parametric equations. Here I have y explicitly defined as a function of x. And I just want to show you this kind of trivial way that I can easily take this explicitly defined function and turn it into a parametric equation. So I'm going to choose x of t equals t. <laughs> <laughs> and then y of t equals t squared plus 3. Okay, so anytime you have 
a explicitly defined function, you can immediately turn that into a parametric equation. So there's really no reason to use explicitly defined functions anymore um, because anything that you can do, any math that you can do with a regular old xy equation, you can immediately turn that into a parametric equation. So there's a lot left to do. Um, you all have a lot of skills doing math in this way. For example, you all know how to write the equation of the tangent line to this curve at a point. You all know how to calculate the arc length of this curve. Um, you know how to calculate the area underneath curves. Um, so we still have some more work to do here. We need to take our understanding of calculus as it applies to explicitly defined functions um, and kind of massage that uh, so that we can use the same techniques to perform similar calculations with uh, parametric defined equations.